Hello everybody, how are you? Hey, are you looking for something to do in Dallas? In this parody video, I'm gonna list five that both tourists and locals alike will enjoy. For example, number one, the sixth, sixth <laughs> floor museum. The sixth floor museum collects representations of sixth floors from all over Dallas. Dallas is a big city, guys. There's plenty of buildings with at least six floors. Where are you gonna go where you can look at all of those at the same time? The Sixth Floor Museum. That's right, they go through the whole history and the current status of the design, the architecture, and the art of these six floors all over town. You're gonna love it. If your interest falls into anything that's close to those categories, Take the whole family down there. You may even want to move into one of the six floors residential areas that you might see or be exposed to in the sixth floor museum or vice versa, maybe a commercial space that you see represented there. It's a great idea. Now, the next one is the McKinney Avenue trolley. This is a great trolley that runs up and down McKinney Avenue. And what's great about it is that the trolley is a little bit older and so it will often go off of its tracks and go on to neighboring tracks around town. So one time the trolley ended up in Austin uh, because it's just, you know, you, you get some of these older trolleys and they are able to not only go off tracks, they can actually run on regular asphalt, but they also don't track real well. So they're, they can leave the main track at any time. And even though it's called the McKinney Avenue Trolley, a lot of people have found that they were able to get a complete tour of Dallas because the conductor had difficulty maintaining the uh, trolley on its tracks. And so it just drove basically itself all over town. Uh, but it, the thing is, it goes like one mile an hour. So it's not a big deal. But in that case, you're getting a big bang for your buck because you can see all of the sites and uh, for the price of just going down McKinney Avenue. But uh, it, it's, it's not something that is scheduled or so you never know. You never know if it's just going to stay on the tracks or if it's just going to get a mind of its own and slowly, uh, like, like your grandpa, just go uh, really slow down a side street. The benefit being, of course, that you get to see a lot more. That's McKinney Avenue Trolley. Now, the Katy Trail is great because it's a trail that runs uh, three miles. You'll be able to go throughout the through the middle of the city on the Katy Trail. And what's neat is if you're a runner, if you're a jogger, if you're exercising, even if you're just a walker, even if you're just a walker, they have uh, girls and ladies uh, of all ages named Katie. Each one is named Katie, and they're uh, stationed along the trail to encourage you. They're like, come on, you got it. You got it. Katie says, you got it. You're a champion. You're a winner. And their shirt says Katie. Katie number two, number 700. There's like uh, eight or 900 Katies that they have in rotation stationed along the Katie Trail. It's a real upbeat, it's real positive, and it's a it's an interesting way that Dallas is able to show visitors and locals alike that they support you no matter who you are. Now, that's number three. Now, number four is the, let's let me look at my notes, uh, White Rock Lake. This is really cool because it's a huge, guys. It's like a thousand acres. They've got the White Rock Lake uh, in the middle of the park. The park itself is a thousand acres. And then the, of course, the lake is in the middle. And in the middle of the lake is the White Rock. Now what they've done is they'll row a band or a musical artist or a singer or any kind of performer, comedians and such, out to the rock. And they stand on the rock while they do their performance. So that is really cool because the audience sits on the shore and watch uh, Aerosmith or Beyonce or uh, Katy Perry or uh, Maroon 5, whoever it is, maybe Bill Burr, the comedian or somebody like that, uh, out on the rock performing. The difficulty and something to be aware of is sometimes a band member will slip off the rock into the water. So... For example, during Earth, Wind, and Fire, the entire horn section slipped off the rock into the water and had to be rescued by the Coast Guard. Uh, now, what's cool, in that case, they were pulled out of the water by the Coast Guard and continued to play 
once they were in the Coast Guard boat, uh, continued to play that song and finished out the rest of the set from the Coast Guard boat. So you don't have to worry that you're not going to get the bang for your buck there. That's a good one. White Rock Lake. Check it out. And finally, the uh, this is kind of cool because it's a farmer's market, Dallas Farmer's Market. Uh, now, the original farmer's market, they were selling stuff that came in from outside of Dallas, okay, from Canada and from Milwaukee, from uh, Bowling Green, Ohio, from uh, Tippecanoe, from um, Nacogdoches, all over the place. But people are like, hey, this is great, but how about some local stuff? How about some local pumpkins and squash and stuff and corn and uh, even beef? Even beef. Bring some cows in here. Let's come on. We're a meat-eating, uh, cattle-driven community. And so now the Dallas Farmer's Market has food not only from around the country and around the world, but half of it is, at least half, based on their uh, new policies, is from the Dallas area. So you have all those delicacies that if you're from Dallas, you're already aware of. The Dallas Onion, which is like a regular onion, but it's like five, and when you cut it, it not only makes you cry, but it makes you confess to crimes from five to 10 years ago. And there's been some divorces uh, because people cutting these onions up, they're really powerful. You've got the uh, Dallas pickle, which is really interesting because it's the size of a gourd. And so if you're gonna put pickle slices on your hot dog, on your hamburger, if you cut them, they're the size of a pancake and they stick out the side of the bun and you have to nibble on that uh, pickle piece until you get to the bread and the meat of your uh, sandwich there, whatever it might be. Maybe you're putting it, maybe you're putting pickles on peanut butter and jelly. I don't know. I, I don't suggest that, but there you go. Uh, the other thing that is really kind of popular at the Dallas Farmers Market is the uh, Dallas Hot Peppers. Now, you say, well, I've had hot pepper. This is an interesting thing about hot pepper people. People that love to eat hot peppers, they're like, I've had the best. I've had the hottest. You haven't had a hot pepper till you've had a Dallas hot pepper. The reason being is that they were baked in the Dallas, Texas sun and exposed to Dallas humidity, which creates a molecular, a molecular change that accelerates the heat development by 10,000 times. So one bite has put, put people in the hospitals, uh, area hospitals. In fact, they have a fire extinguisher right above your head built into the tables. Uh, it's kind of a uh, overhang thing on a, on a hook. Uh, and all you have to do is pull the cord and it'll douse you with fire extinguisher chemicals. And then a uh, team runs out and sprays you down with water and wrap you in bandages like a mummy. And they carry you out to White, White Rock Lake and they throw you in the water to cool you off. So I, I'm just going to say be careful out there at the Dallas Farmer's Market because some of that local food is uh, more than tourists, for example, can handle. Now, locals usually know, and a lot of them, again, have been brought up with that food four, five, seven, ten generations some of them are related to uh, the uh, Texan Sam Houston, and a lot of those, you know, they, through the generations, their stomachs have become especially well. They call it they call it the Dallas stomach lining, and it's an inch wide lining in the stomach of people from Dallas that is part uh, clay, part asbestos, and part uh, I guess it's a polymer that they've discovered inside these people's stomachs through the generations, their stomach has, nature has created a lining that allows them to eat these incredibly hot, incredibly delicious foods. But for locals, uh, you gotta be careful, guys. So, hey, those are five really neat things that you can do in Dallas. Give them a try. If you know others that we should put on the list, uh, go ahead and leave a comment here on the YouTuber or over on the Tweet Machine. And come back because we're going to have more. We're going to add more things to do in Dallas uh, as we do a whole series on that city this week. 
and will eventually make up the text of the book, Joe Ditzel Has Some Problems in Dallas. Talk to you soon.